Joe and I are going to discuss this video. Um, it's gone viral. I think it came out like a year ago. It's a video by a gentleman named David Gibbs. And David Gibbs was given a testimony one time about how it's called listening to the listen to the voice. It's called. And this video has gone uh, viral on TikTok recently. And that's how Joe Zavarelli is actually the one that sent it to me. Um, and I listened to this video a month ago. And about a month ago, I was, if you guys would follow along with me, um, when I returned to my show last week, I was going through my 16 week journey of healing from anxiety and going through the inner circle program. My man, Dennis Simsek, the anxiety guy. And at the time, you know, I was still going through some things, just kind of working through like the final phases and pushing through some things. And uh, this video really spoke to me. It was a great reminder for me about uh, listening to God's voice uh, through the fire, through, um, in this case, the storm. You guys will hear what the story is here in a minute when I play it. Some of you might have heard it. Uh, but essentially, the guy talks about how one time he was on an airplane and the pilot passed out. And while they're uh, on the plane with a passed out pilot, no one knew how to fly the plane. So a gentleman had to come in his ear and, and the guy told me, he said, you have to keep listening to my voice. I'm going to tell you what to do. Just keep listening to my voice. Keep listening to my voice. And it's a great story and a reminder of why it's important to listen to God's voice um, in times when we're going through hardships, in times when we're just going through life in general. You know what I mean? But especially times when you're going through hardships, like for me, my journey with anxiety, uh, or times when you get down about certain things, maybe you're waiting for certain things, maybe you're, certain things haven't come to fruition yet in your life, um, maybe you've taken some risk. I can relate to that. I've taken a lot of risk in the last year. I don't say risk, but things that I would uh, definitely would not have done a year ago. I can tell you that. <laughs> and um, and so, you know, with that, though, comes a lot of, you know, your mind will give you a lot of, uh, it'll tell you a, a thousand the reasons why not to do it, all the things that can go wrong. And just like you get this false illusion in your head of what's really going on. That's not accurate. And a lot of times <laughs> it won't give you the most accurate uh, what's really going on until thousand, you know, thoughts later, you know, and uh, it's like I'm just a never you get caught in a cycle and you can put a lot of pressure on yourself and, you know, all that stuff. And so I'm going to play this video and then I'm going to bring my man Joe Zavarelli on right after. And Joe and I are going to uh, dive deep into the video and give our takes on it. And um, yeah, so um, without further ado, let me get the video up here. All right. And so I'm going to play this video. It's uh, eight minutes long. Um, really listening. It's a great story. It's, a, it's one of the probably one of the greatest things I ever heard, especially on the uh, on social media in a long time. So, uh, yeah, let's get to it. I was in Alaska doing a lawsuit. We're way out in the Aleutian Islands, getting ready to leave and go back to Anchorage and then home. And I had a ticket in my pocket to get on an airplane the pastor came up and he said listen i can save you money i said how's that he said i flew a small airplane up here and i fly a small airplane and i can take you in my little airplane and you can save your ticket and this did not sound i said gee thank you so very very much but i've got this ticket we'll just make our way on home me and this other lawyer with me he said, no, 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 you got to do it. You got to do it. And against every better judgment I had, I said, OK, well, we went out to the airport, took us by his little plane and I looked at it and I thought, well, one good thing, it's shiny. Then he walked around it. We got in. He's on the left front. I'm on the right front. The other lawyer's sitting right behind me. And he started it up and it started up just fine. Well, we taxied out. I said, should we pray? He said, yeah, that's a good idea. We normally don't. I said, well, this time we're going <laughs> to. And I'm telling you, I prayed five, eight minutes. I prayed a long time. We went and got on the runway. He starts down the runway. The plane lifted off ever so gently, and we start climbing. And it's wonderful. Not a problem in the world. We started climbing, and we flew probably three, four minutes. And something happened that will never leave my mind. The pilot turned to me and he said, we're going in the clouds and I can't fly in clouds. They make me pass out. I said, clouds make you do what? <laughs> now, it's been cloudy all day. And we go right up into the clouds and you can't see anything. 
and he looks at me and his eyes roll back in his head and he starts mumbling and he passes out, passed out cold. Now I grabbed him and I shook him and I said, come on, you gotta wake up so I can kill you. Now we we're in the clouds flying along with no pilot. And my friend in the back seat said, we're dead, aren't we? I said, there's a very good chance of that, yes. He said, what are we gonna do? I said, I don't know. But there was a radio right there and I handed him the microphone and I said, start asking for help. So he's in the back seat reaching up and he said, hello, hello. We didn't know any proper radio etiquette. All we were saying was hello. And somebody answered back, hello, hello. Don't you guys know proper radio etiquette? And I said, give it to me. I said, tell we don't know nothing. Tell him we're in an airplane with a passed out pilot and we don't know how to fly this plane. The guy said, I'm a freighter flying out of Anchorage on the way to Tokyo. And he said, you're telling me you have nobody who can fly that plane with you? I said, tell him that's correct. Now you gotta understand, I am sweating bullets. He said, the first thing I'm gonna do is start circling so I don't lose you because I'll fly out of range of your radio and you won't have me anymore. And he said, I'm gonna get Anchorage Emergency for you. And Anchorage Emergency will be the people that can maybe help you try to save your life. After about five minutes, Anchorage came on, said, we understand you have a passed out pilot. And those of you do not know how to fly that plane. We said, that's right. They said, well, the first thing we gotta do is find you. And I'll never forget what this man at Anchorage said. He said, my job is to get you home safe. He said, that's my job. But he said, here's the deal. If you want me to get you home safe, you gotta promise me you'll obey my voice. He said, you can't see me, but I can see you. And he said, if you're not gonna obey my voice, you're gonna die. When you can't see anything, you have no idea how disorientated you become. Finally, he said, okay, I found you. Now hear me clear. He said, you're four minutes from a mountain. He said, you're gonna crash in that mountain and die. Follow my voice. I never said, I have to follow your voice. Is that reasonable? You see, I understood without his voice, I had nothing. And do you understand without God's voice, you have nothing, nothing. Finally, he got us turned and he said, I'm freezing all the traffic in the area. He said, it's gonna take me an hour and a half to get you to Anchorage. And there's a lot of weather between you and Anchorage. You're in for a rough ride. And he said, I want you to hear me. I don't want you to look at what's going on outside. I don't want you to pay attention to the storm, just my voice. He said, if you start watching the storm, you will die, but I'll take you through it. Now, because they cleared all the traffic, several pilots, those nighttime freighters, those 747s started talking to us. They said, we're praying for you, men. You're gonna make it, but listen to the voice. That's the key. They said, trust the voice. Do you realize your head is full of voices and everybody in this world wants to talk to you and everybody wants to be the controlling voice? And God says, I want you to be a living sacrifice. I want you to put yourself on the altar and let my voice be your voice. Finally, we went through the worst of the weather, but there was still more. And then the voice came back and it said, now, I'm gonna line you up. He said, I'm gonna bring you in right down the runway. And at the foot of the runway are some lights and they're in the form of a cross. He said, don't you forget this. The cross is the way home. Finally, he's bringing us down. We still can't see anything. And all he kept saying is, stay with me. My sheep, the Bible says, hear my voice and they follow me. Finally, just a couple hundred feet off the ground, we saw the cross. I landed the plane. In fact, I landed it seven times. Finally, it all came to a stop. And the minute we stopped, the pilot woke up. The voice said, thanks for listening. I watch them crash and burn all the time because they won't follow my voice. They don't understand I'm the one who can see them even when they can't see me. But they get the voices in their head and they kill themselves. They self-destruct. Thanks for listening to the voice. Then they put us in a motel room in about four in the morning, knock at my door. I opened the door and a man was standing there, he said, hello, David. I said, you're the voice. You're the one who got me home. 
He said, I am. Do you understand one day you're going to stand before him and say, you were the voice. You're the voice that brought me hope. If you're not on that altar as a living sacrifice, your head's full of voices. And then we wonder why kids crash and burn. We wonder why marriages are shattered. And the Lord's saying, I'm the one who has the voice. All I can remember is that voice saying, stay with me. Stay with me. Don't listen to what's going on in your head and don't watch the storm. Stay with me. And I'll take you through. Tonight you have a God who has promised to take you through. A living sacrifice, holy. Uh, great video. Uh, powerful sermon there. Powerful story. Um, a lot to get into there. So now, without further ado, bring the man himself up. Uh, Joe the Paisan Zavarelli. What's happening, brother? What's going on, bro? You doing all right? Yeah, how are you doing, man? Doing good. I'm doing good, bro. Doing good. Well, welcome back to the real. It's good to see you again. Um, good to be back. Fourth of July special with the Paisan. So, um, Absolutely. but no, I, I'm appreciate coming on today. Um, thank you for sending me that video number one a month ago. I needed that at the time. Um, and then we were both going through, going through some things at the time. And so, um, but yeah, I guess we'll get right into it. What's your initial reaction to that video? Oh, it's extremely powerful. I mean, you just go through, you know, life's got a lot of voices out there. You know, you, you know what you're kind of supposed to do in a way, but you don't know how to get there. And there's always all these different avenues and alleys and things that you can go down but it's not necessarily the right path and you know through the weather through the you know events of life and so forth and you know sometimes um the cloudiness of life you have to lean on god to get you through that and you don't know where exactly you're going through the weather through all that but you know as long as you're trusting him and you're relying on that voice he's going to lead you to the destination and where he has you planned and, and called to be so mm. it really uh it really hit me hard so yeah Probably. it really hit me hard too it uh it really just reminded me a lot about my life the last you know, my journey with anxiety for the last eight years and just how for probably the first six seven years i was not listening to the voice as much as i should have and a lot of it too is you know maturity with age and you know when all this when I was 15 years old all the start of 23 now so um but yeah it's just you know it's funny like with anxiety oftentimes what makes anxiety worse is when you add more to it when you keep feeding into the you know you get symptoms you get the intrusive thoughts you get all the all the weird things that come with it and what oftentimes it makes it worse because you keep when you add more fuel to it you're not it's like he said there if he would have looked at that storm he would have yeah. crashed he would have died. And, you know, I thought what was crazy when I listened to that again, I never really realized what he said, though. They were in the air for an hour and a half. That's a long time. <laughs> I mean, yeah. an hour and a half. And, you know, it reminds me when I would have bad panic attacks, Joe, and it would be there would be times where I had to cry out to God. Just I was alone, alone. Or I was out on a bike alone. I was in a car, you know, and you start to wonder if, when you have some, when you go through bad health anxiety and been out there watching, and maybe you yourself can, you know, you're just going through hard times and, and just moments. Like a panic attack usually lasts about 20 minutes, you know what I mean, until it peaks. And then, it, but that 20 minutes feels like a long, long time. <laughs> it feels like, yeah. feels like 20 hours, you know. And, and um, so I, it's, the crazy list that it, an hour and a half, I mean, just to, uh, to create the strength to be able to focus like that. <laughs> 